I'd say on the average we spend uh, two or three months casting, looking at literally hundreds of people before we come up with the people that we want. The lead role had to be played by this backwoods girl, turn you know, the early 20th century, and the accent had to be really realistic. We would go first to uh, theater directors or uh, other actors or, or, or um, if for young people we would go to some high schools where they have active drama departments and I would tell people what we're looking for and then they would in turn give us people that they would recommend so we would start with that on each person we would audition we would have slides a form their resume and we would have a little bit on tape because we could not trust our eye in an audition because you know, this is for film and it's not theater so we would have to see what people look like on the film and how they took direction they had no clue about what appalachian life was was like you know it was a it was just basically uh they saw the grand old opera they heard it on the radio or or, or watched hee haw on television they had some kind of idea of what country accents were so they would try these country accents out and, and it didn't seem right to me and I and I got more and more and more discouraged. So I decided to go on a trip down through the south, southwestern Virginia and western North Carolina to look for actors down there. We had little casting calls all around the mountains in North Carolina. So some people came in at the beginning, a woman uh, uh, came in and she played the banjo and, and she, had, she was a teacher in a school in Madison County. She brought a, a young girl with her, 13 years old, and the young girl was very, very lively, very enjoyable. Okay, and so what grade are you in? Eight. Okay, have you done any acting before? No, sir. Oh, all right, good. I hadn't had any experience in movies before. Well, please don't put me in a sack, because I'd howl like a dog and squall like a cat, and my bones would crack like dishes breaking, and my blood would run like honey. There's a lot of different ways that you can handle casting that aren't necessarily just having them read the script. You know, I'm all by myself, but I can look pretty good, I believe. Yeah, they look at these magazines all the time, making their pretty futures, how they're going to be when they grow up. I figured I'm going to get me a pretty good house. Don't know how I'm going to do with this cabbage patch I got here, but heck, I'll figure it out somehow or another. <laughs> I got to pretty good. To be her, it's not that string easy. And I watch it more than they believe. When they go to bed at night, I sneak out and get some of their pretties and do that with them, kind of. But that's not the life for me. I like it. Nature stuff. After you've kind of got an idea of the people that you want to be in this are, are, are your finalists for a various part. You want to see how those people are going to work together. So the next stage in casting is to bring the people together that you think are going to work and try them out in groups. Now, all I've got left in the world is your case knife and much mega. I'm going to leave it to you and I want you to always keep it in the apron pocket. Oh, my heart so bad. Lord have mercy, girls. I believe I'm a dying. I ain't got nothing left in this world. But this your case now. And I want you to take it now. Put it in your apron pocket. And keep it with you all the time. I have the green eyes and some of the freckles, but she had a little bit darker skin and um, they made her eyes look uh, a little bit greener. So I had to get there like two hours earlier to have all my makeup put on and have my hair done and everything and be in costume by the time they actually got ready to start filming. They had this makeup and it just looked like dirt and they would just take uh, powder brushes and scrub it all over our fingers. We had to get it under our fingernails so it would look dirty under there. They toned her hair down a lot till it was kind of a mousy brown color and it was, um, they braided it every day. Roll camera. 
We're on. Music. They told me my whole ninth grade year I couldn't have my hair cut. It was, it was like, you know, really important to the movie that when my hair stayed the same the whole time. As soon as they told me we had filmed that last scene, I went and got all my hair cut. I was like going to be a rebel. So. I don't consider any makeup to be a straight makeup. People will tell me, oh, we just want a little, you know, normal makeup, a little straight makeup. And I want to know what the character's playing, because to me, you know, is it a is it a glamour gal? Is it a homespun lady? Is it a country girl? Is it you know? Has she been outside all her life? She's been inside all her life. I want to know these things, and a lot of times people look at me a little strange because they they don't think of it in terms of character. Bear skin was unusual because you never have someone in movies get that dirty, that long-haired, or that filthy. And in the movie, he makes a deal with the devil not to shave or cut his hair for seven years. So you have someone who's seven years long on all this stuff. And not only do you just see him at seven years, but you see him in gradual steps. And I think that's a lot of fun in makeup, when you can do an old age or a dirt makeup or something where it develops and you get to see it come out. Um, and that makeup especially was as extreme as you, I could ever do on dirt. I mean, there, he was just absolutely ground in filthy dirty. Cut! Mm. The actor did a good job of making the audience feel the dirt, but we also added some live props to make the makeup really disgusting. There was also a scene that was really an interesting challenge too in the end where he rips the, the bear skin off, and it had to look like it had grown into his skin. And we literally latex the, the bear skin to the, to the actor's back. And then when he tore it off, it left big patches in the dirt of kind of pink skin where the latex had, had peeled off his back. If you are interested in makeup, you should learn as many things about as many kinds of things as you possibly can. Um, you have to know history if you're going to do period films or period commercials, uh, uh, historical films or historical commercials. You have to know about physiognomy, you have to know about art, you have to know about sculpture. <clears throat> There's almost nothing I haven't learned that hasn't come in handy at one time or another. Um, so you don't close yourself off to anything. die. In Soldier Jack, we wanted to make the actress look old. So we started off with a head cast that we made of her, uh, and we did a complete bust of her head, three-dimensionally, um, which takes quite a while, and you have to completely cover the face in one setting. And then you would think that all you would do is sculpt onto the, the face cast what you wanted it to look like and pull it off as one big mask. <clears throat> but this wouldn't move as nicely as if you broke the mask up into different individual pieces and glued these pieces onto the face individually so that it would move with the face. It's awful. For a student starting out, this is pretty elaborate to get into. So it's easier to start off with nose putty and crepe hair and, and painting and, and doing things like that and then getting into this later on when you have a little experience. Thank you.